Well, you know, if you understand germ theory and how it's been applied, then it's amazing. You really understand the political model. <laughs> Oh, 100%. it's the perfect metaphor. So it's a perfect place. You know, it's the perfect thing for us to share on our first discussion. So let me present you with the soapbox. We need a deeper history and education in the germ theory. If it hasn't driven you crazy by now, you have a very strong constitution. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So help us out. Let's go from there. So the first thing I would say is that the germ theory, which many people ascribe to the late 1800s and Pasteur, was actually goes way back to even Greek times, you know, sort of ancient Greek times. Right. Aristotle. Yeah. And, and it's because, for very simple reasons, that if you observe the world, which we all do, it appears that people in the same place sometimes get sick with the same thing. And so it's not at all unreasonable to say they may be passing something back and forth. Right. And so that thought has been there for literally thousands of years. Now that's one of the sort of modern proofs that there are viruses and bacteria causing disease. And I would point out that any of us would think that that's actually nonsense because, for instance, in Japan in whatever, 1945, a lot of people died because somebody dropped a bomb on them, right. and nobody thinks that's a virus. So one can't say because a lot of people in the same place get sick, that means it's a virus, or even that it's contagious. So that's the background. And then came a change in human consciousness to a much more mechanistic, materialistic mode of thinking. I mean, thinking like Descartes thought that only physical substance exists. Right. That, I would say, was a radical departure from how every prior human culture or people thought about life in the world. So this theory that we're only based on substance is very radical theory. But anyways, uh, so that was the sort of philosophical background to the 1890s. And then came some experiments and some invention of the light microscope. And people started seeing uh, these unicellular organisms called bacteria. And then came the theory that some of the diseases that we see, and maybe even most of them, are because this bacteria goes from one person to another and makes them sick. And that's basically the, the foundation of the germ theory. Now, interestingly, at that time, and now we're talking 1850s to 1880s, there were a lot of people, and particularly a guy named Beauchamp, who said that's just not true. In fact, these bacteria are just scavengers in nature. They're feeding off dead material, and they don't cause any disease. It's the situation of the person. So then you have this sort of debate of germ versus terrain. Terrain just means the condition of the person or the animal. Right. So then uh, Pasteur got into this, and decided to try to sort this out. Now, here's the way that I would describe it to people. And I would say almost to a certain extent of all the things I may say, if you want to remember anything, this is the thing to remember. So let's take an example of how this works. We're talking terrain versus germ. So let's say you have a cow. And for whatever reason, you don't feed the cow properly. So instead of feeding the cow pasture and grass, like cows are supposed to, you feed it grains and cardboard and dead cow parts and you know all the other things that we feed cows. So now you have a sick cow. And then to top it off, you spray glyphosate and DDT and other you know, worming agents and fungus killing stuff and whatever. Right. All of that gets absorbed into the cow's tissues, which is the whole point. And then as we know, anything you poison an animal with comes out in the milk. So then you have this poisoned milk, and then the person drinks the milk and gets sick. So the theory then is you transmitted something from the milk to the person and you got them sick. And then you look under the microscope and you see this bacteria that's called listeria, which is a so-called pathogenic or disease-causing bacteria in the milk. And then you look in the stool of the person who has the diarrhea 
and you find the same bacteria. And it was as if it was a eureka moment in history. Right. End of story. We've now right. proven that germs cause disease. Now we're talking bacteria. Okay, so what's the problem? Well, it turns out there is another possible explanation. And that explanation is also very simple and very logical, that you have poison milk and the role of bacteria in the world is to digest poisons wherever they are found. And so the listeria are not there as a pathogenic uh, organism. They're there to biodegrade, in other words, eat the poisons in the milk. In fact, they're helping you and the cow out. Right. Now, we have two very reasonable explanations. I would only point out that if you look into nature, which is you know, what I've tried to do for 40 years as a student of Goethe, he said, don't start with theories, start with observations. Otherwise, you may get blindsided. Right. So if you look into nature, you, for instance, see if you put you know, wonky stuff, wonky stuff is a very scientific term, <laughs> by the way, meaning, meaning bad stuff in your compost pile, you'll get funky bacteria. Nobody says the compost pile has an infection. Everybody says that the bacteria are biodegrading that. And if you, if you weren't such an idiot, you would stop throwing that stuff in your compost pile. Okay, fair enough. Same with a pond. You have a pond, you put poisons in it, you get algae growth. Uh, the algae are eating the poisons. They're helping you out because you were, quote, dumb enough to put poisons in your pond. Nobody says the pond has an infection. Right. Now, anybody would say that the problem is the poisons. And as soon as you stop throwing the poisons, by some miracle, because they don't have any more food, the algae grow away. So getting back to our milk, we have these two very reasonable explanations. One is it's the listeria, the bacteria. The other, it's the poisons, the bad quality of the milk, and the listeria is just eating the poisons. So the question then is, how do you know which of those is true? It's very simple. All you have to do is isolate the listeria from the milk, feed somebody pure listeria, and then you could also feed them the milk pure, without the listeria, and you could see if they get sick. So this is what Louis Pasteur did for 40 years. He was the first to be able to do this, sort of. I mean. He basically stole the idea. But anyways, um, he took pure cultures of bacteria, isolated from pathogenic, you know, from sick right. people, fed them to animals or people, made them sick, did public demonstrations. And he was the Fauci of his <laughs> day because he proved the germ theory and he was saved humanity. And so there you go. Except there was one problem. Well, maybe not a problem, but he did have the integrity to keep a personal diary. And in that diary, which he told his heirs never to publish, but apparently one of his heirs, I think his son-in-law or something, uh, hated his guts because he's kind of an asshole, <laughs> um, but published it anyways. And in there, Pasteur admitted that it turns out that not once was he able to transmit disease with a pure bacteria not once. And that in order to do these public demonstrations, he had to actually spike it with like arsenic and mercury. Oh my God, he spiked then, them? Yes, because wow. how are you going to make people sick? He already right. knew that he couldn't. So, and anyways, when you're famous, you know, you, <laughs> you know the rest, but you keep going. Right. Uh, you, once you get caught in a fraud, you're in trouble. So then you have to escalate. And he didn't tell anybody, except he told people in his diary. And then famously on his deathbed, he said, the germ is nothing, the terrain is everything. Because he realized he was a complete failure and a fraud. Right.